Hi everyone, this is Pastor Teresa at Beaver Ridge United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining me here for just Tuesday afternoon. Talk a little bit about a story we find in the Gospel of John. It's from chapter 3. It's where Jesus teaches Nicodemus. Hear this story and let's see what God has for us for today. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. So he was one of the church's leaders. He was in a pretty influential place. He came to see Jesus at night, not during the daytime, at nighttime, when no one else could see him or would know that he had come to see Jesus. And he said to Jesus, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. So you see, Nicodemus wasn't one of your typical religious leaders of the time. He knew something was special about Jesus, and he wanted to come and check it out. So he's coming in the middle of the night where he can't be ridiculed by his um, colleagues the next day or so. He's curious, and he has questions. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Well, how can a man be born when he is old, Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. You see, Nicodemus, Nicodemus is thinking about the earthly things, of how things operate. and He is missing something here, but he's still bold in that he questions Jesus. And Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. So Jesus is not talking about an earthly rebirth. He's talking about a spiritual birth, something that can only be done by God. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus. And do you not understand these things? I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. You know, from the time um, they were little, they were hearing about the scrolls and the scriptures and they were being told the stories. And in Nicodemus's situation, he would have grown on up into a man who studied the scrolls and would have had Bible studies and, and uh, conversations. I mean, this was their life. And Jesus is saying, you've read it. It's there. You've been told through the prophets, through the scrolls. Here I am telling you and showing you signs and you miss it. You are missing it. How is it that you don't believe? And um, it goes on to say that, you know, um, I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. So he's admitting to Nicodemus, you know, you haven't been to heaven, but the Son of Man has been. I have been. I left that place to come here and to be with you. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Jesus is referring back to something that Nicodemus would have known very well, a story of the time in, in um, the Old Testament in which uh, the, the the Hebrews were out in the wilderness with Moses, and he'd gone away for a period of time. And when he came back, he found them uh, worshiping idols, and and uh, there was punishment for doing that. And uh, the people got very sick, and some died because of the of their actions, the consequences of it. And so Moses cried out to the people, or cried out to God, to forgive them, I have mercy, and. Um, that's when uh, Moses is told, uh, take a snake and put it on a pole, and those who look at it will receive healing. And so Jesus is referring to this here. Just like that snake was put on that pole to heal the people, uh, when I am on the cross, I will bring eternal life. I'll bring a different kind of healing. I'll bring eternal healing. So Nicodemus would have very much have known that story in the Old Testament and been able to draw that conclusion where Jesus was going with this illustration. 
And then here's my favorite scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into, this, into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only son. And this is the verdict. Light has come into the world, meaning Jesus has come into the world. But men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. I love this story about Nicodemus. He had a curiosity. He wanted to know more. He goes to the source and he asks his questions. And, you know, Jesus enters into a conversation with him. He's encouraging him, and yet he's challenging him too. All in the cover of the night. Sometimes my most desperate questions to God comes in the middle of the night when I feel most alone or I fear most anxious or concerned. And so to see Nicodemus traveling in the middle of the night is encouraging to me to remind me that no matter when I'm curious, or no matter when I have questions, no matter when I want to know something from the Lord, I can just come to him day or night. Ask those questions. The Lord has that kind of patience. He, Jesus met Nicodemus right where he was. And in it, we have this beautiful story. And we're told right there that God loves us all, the whole world. And that was the word that came to bring that message. It is the light that came to shine into the darkness. Wherever you are in your spiritual journey, I hope you remember that Jesus and God loves you deeply. He came for you. And he'll, he will um, listen to and share with you any conversation or question you may have. Keep talking to God. Keep seeking. Keep searching. Keep being curious, just like Nicodemus. And soon enough, you will hear God answer because he loves you. He loves you dearly. Thank you for joining me. I hope to see you on uh, uh, Sunday, this Sunday, um, uh, at, at 10 o'clock for worship online or in person, or join us on um, Wednesdays. Uh, we have Bible study tomorrow from uh, uh, 1 o'clock and 6 p.m. And then next Wednesday, we start our Wednesday night meals back. We've got a lot of good stuff going on over here at Beaver Ridge, and we just love and appreciate you so much. Take care, and we will talk soon. Goodbye.